Creepy things happen happen before the grave. grave. Missing Parts by Foggy Glass Eye Rose had been called to the morgue on her day off. Despite the incredible stress of staying healthy and safe while surrounded by the infected dead, the bastards upstairs weren't willing to let it wait until Monday. It's an emergency, they claimed, and it needs all hands on deck right now. She didn't expect to see everyone else suiting up outside the main room, but there they were. Raul, Malcolm, even Rob. Everyone was there for this so-called emergency. Rose was more than simply skeptical about the notion until she finally joined them in the front of the coolers. It was a shit show. Most of the coolers that had been occupied were now open, the bodies thawing out over the last few hours due to the exposure to room temperature. Well, Raoul muttered, looks like a room full of closed casket funerals to me. The worst part? The bodies weren't intact. Overnight, someone had broken into the morgue and removed parts from the bodies. Some were infected, others having unrelated causes of death, and there seemed to be no pattern amongst what was taken. Fingers, eyeballs, even entire limbs were removed. One body, that a young black man, a college track athlete, according to Raul, had only the head and feet missing. A teenage girl's shins were taken, her discarded feet left where the missing kneecaps would have been. An elderly woman's limbs had all been removed, only her head and torso intact. A small cut along the neck, indicating that the head was considered before being left behind. The remaining parts had not all been left where they'd been found. Rose happened upon an entire slab covered in different hands, as though they were being compared. Nearby, two lighter-skinned arms were left on the slab of a Latino man's body, his arms having been taken. Rose asked Rob what he thought that meant. He shrugged. Best guess? He liked those arms, but then decided that they weren't as good as the other ones. The concept made Rose dry heave. The crew didn't hear anything about the person who did this until the following Monday. The security footage from inside the lab had been tampered with and the entire recording system destroyed. Luckily, a camera from across the street covered the alleyway entrance and the footage hadn't been touched. The camera showed a wide, short man in raggedy clothes pushing an empty cart into the alley. An hour later, he emerged, his cart full of black trash bags. The camera showed where he was going, but the trail went cold from there. So far, no one could tell for sure what he wanted or even where he was going next. Due to the nature of the situation, the bastards upstairs didn't want to get it out, so all they could do was upgrade security for morgues across the city and hope for the best. Meanwhile, the entire place had to be sterilized. Rose helped with the cleanup searching every nook and cranny to make sure nothing would be missed. Lucky that she did, as she found a rogue eyeball that had rolled under a cabinet, resting against a cold storage wall that kept it relatively chilled. Try as she might, despite all records and remaining body parts at her disposal, Rose couldn't find the other eye or even what body it belonged to. Beyond frustrated, she asked Raul what he thought during the next shift. Isn't it obvious? He teased. No, look at it like this, then. A guy comes in and steals dozens of body parts, leaving a huge mess behind. We clean it all up, categorize what's here and what's missing, but you can't find out where the eye goes. It's sort of like trying to put together a puzzle with half the pieces missing, like a nice little beach at sunset, and then you find a single bright green piece that just doesn't go anywhere. Have you ever considered that the eye doesn't belong here? That it's an extra piece from a different puzzle? For all we know, it just slipped right out of his pocket.